So this is our last video for the week, for, the, for week four of the Logit model, and we're gonna talk about a few empirical considerations uh, that, that you might run into, depending on kind of what data, what exactly what your setting is, and what kind of data you might have available. So it turns out the Logit model, we've talked about kind of having individual level data, right, where, where all of our Xs have, have Ns on them. Uh, we observe different data for every individual, the Logit model can also be estimated from market level data, and it often is. So the example here is you observe the price, the market share, and attributes of every cereal brand at the grocery store. There's a classic paper by Aviv Nouveau on cereal. So you observe these, these data about every cereal brand at the grocery store, or every cereal product at the grocery store. And you wanna estimate the structural parameters of consumer decision-making that explain those observed purchases. Well, what we've got in this setting is many people going to the grocery store. There's just a single price and a single set of attributes for every cereal, right? Like, it's not like if we went to the store at the same time, it's not like my price is different from yours. Let's set aside like you've got the card for the store and so you can get a discount and I can't or something like that. But we're all gonna face the same price. We're all gonna face the same set of attributes when we go. So the data is not individual. It's, it's it, my data is the same as your data in that case for things like price and attributes. So the data don't have an, an end subscript on them. That's one way to think about that. It's all market level instead of individual. And so what that means is that our choice probabilities aren't going to be individual. They're going to be aggregate. My choice probability is going to be the same as your choice probability because we have the same data, at least in the logit model. We'll get to models where, where we can have different choice probabilities, but if we face the same data, the logit model is going to say that we have the same choice probabilities. Well, if we observe lots of consumers with the same choice probabilities, whatever our choice probability is, that should be our observed market share. If the choice probability says that I have, and you also have a 50% chance of choosing this cereal and a 25% chance of that cereal and so on, then we should see that first cereal with a 50% market share, the second cereal with a 25% market share. So we can say, not that we have an expression for choice probabilities, but that we actually have an expression for what market shares it should be. If we use our usual assumption that representative utility is linear, then we can plug in beta times x up here instead of uh, v's. And then if we just kind of take the ratio and log, there's, there's some math here that I'm skipping, but ultimately we can get to this expression where the log of one uh, market share the log of the market share of one good minus the log of the market share of another good just equals this linear uh, linear expression that depends on our parameters and the data about each one of those products. So what we can do here is set one alternative to be a reference and usually we're going to use the outside option. So like maybe we observe that there are some people that come and go at the grocery store without buying cereal at all. We'll say buying no cereal counts as the outside option. You get no utility from that, but it also doesn't cost anything, right? So we set one alternative to be our reference. And then we can estimate this regression here at the bottom, the difference between the log of market shares is a linear function of the difference in the data well, we can, if, as long as we know, as long as we have a number to plug in for the left-hand side, which we do, we observe market shares, so we can calculate the left-hand side of this thing. We know all the X's, so we know what goes into the right-hand side here. Now we've got a number, which is a linear function of some data. We have data as a linear function of data. We can just estimate this using an OLS regression. So if you have market level data and you wanna estimate the logit model, you can simply do this with an OLS regression, which is kind of nice, it makes things a little simpler. You don't even have to use, you know, the mlogit function in R. On the opposite end of the spectrum though, sometimes you have more data, right? 
having only market level data is kind of a restriction. It, it, empirically, it makes things easier, but it's kind of a restriction. It, it's always nicer to have more data. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum is maybe you have more data in the form of panel data. So you don't just observe a decision maker making a choice once, you observe them multiple times. Well, we can just tack a, a time term onto our, our utility, our representative utility, our random utility terms, and our choice probabilities. So we can think about, you know, every time that someone makes a choice, there's a different, there, there's a choice probability for that. You make, you go and you make a choice again tomorrow, maybe the data has changed, you can have a new choice probability tomorrow and so on. So kind of every, uh, every decision maker by time period is kind of like its own observation and we, that we can have its own choice probability. So we can estimate this model exactly like we did in the cross section. Um, we can augment it a little bit. If we have panel data, then that means we could use lagged or future variables. There's kind of more stuff we could think about putting on the right hand side uh, or putting into representative utility. We can include previous choices to represent things like habit formation or you know, kind of uh, uh, frictions and changing our choices or something like that. But at the end of the day, that logit assumption still has to hold. And in particular, now our epsilon sub NJT. So the random utility to decision maker N from alternative J in time period T has to be IID. But whatever random unobserved component of utility a given decision maker gets from an from a alternative in this time period it's unlikely that that's gonna be independent from the next time period. If someone just has a preference for some type of good, for if we go back to our previous example, you might like a certain cereal. And so you always buy that at the grocery store. You're not getting new independent random draws of utility every time you go to the grocery store. And so if we think that that unobserved random component of utility is not independent over time, then a simple logit model might not be how we want to estimate a kind of panel data set of choices. Uh, we'll talk about some other ways we can do that later on. And it involves something else we talked about in this week, which is uh, representing uh, kind of preference variation in unobserved ways. That's going to help us get at this which will come when we get to the mixed logit model in, in a month or so. All right, one other thing I wanna mention, this is, this is it for the week, exogeneity. I haven't talked about exogeneity or endogeneity at all this week. Everything we've done has relied on the exogeneity of the data. In other words, uh, conditional on our data, we expect that those error terms are mean zero. Um, If the data are endogenous, though, if this assumption doesn't hold, if the data are actually endogenous, not exogenous, then our structural parameter estimates may be biased. I should probably say, will be biased. We just don't know how much they're gonna be biased by. So let's look at an example of this, uh, an example of endogeneity. But going back to the car versus bus commute choice. If a commuter likes to drive, then they're not gonna care about how close they live to a bus stop. If they know they're gonna drive no matter what, they're gonna live, they could live nowhere near any public transit. But if a commuter knows that they want to, they like the, taking the bus and they want to take the bus, they're gonna be more likely to live close to a bus stop. So what we're gonna see in the data is people live far away from a bus stop and they don't drive, and they drive instead of taking the bus. People live close to the bus stop and they take the bus instead of driving. But we're not gonna be able to estimate consistent parameters to say, is it the case that living close to the bus stop and thus having a short time on the bus or you know, time to wait for the bus, does that give you more utility in, of taking the bus and make it more likely that you're gonna take the bus or is the opposite true? 
right? We could actually end up with parameters that are way too large because we kind of have this simultaneity going on, but we're going to plug all of that uh, all of that correlation onto only one side of this kind of bi-directional uh, effect. So we're going to talk about how to deal with endogeny, endogeneity later on. For now, we're just going to assume that everything is exogenous and, and we're happy with, uh, happy with our data. And then we'll talk about how to deal with it later on. That's all I've got for this week. In class, we've got some examples where in R, we're going to talk through bin uh, binary logit models and multiples. Uh, but that's it on kind of the, the theory side of things for this week.